Uh, all right, thanks everybody. It is now, you want me to say the time? It's uh, 5.38. We're starting uh, Citizens Water Committee. Welcome everybody. I know we took like, like almost three weeks off. I know we had some schedule issues and I even had to kind of mentally get back into the, the, the mode of what we were doing. Um, I think, um, I just want to start with a little brief and then allow each committee member to kind of give a little update on their own and then we'll go into the topics. But uh, I think we've, we've, we've vetted out a lot of stuff. Um, and um, I'll tell you from what I've seen and heard, there has already been action on certain things that have been coming out of this committee uh, mm -hmm. that have been proactively taken on uh, through the water department. So um, we certainly, I think we should still charge along with some of the things we're doing. Um, what I'm most encouraged about that I think that seemed to be a consensus amongst the committee members to have sort of what we called our separate list of recommendations of things that the city commission and the leadership should look into improving and then things that we should look at that are more appropriate for an outside third party to look at. Um, I've also had the opportunity to just kind of reflect on that number, which I know we weren't going to be anywhere 200,000, um, but as we go through the list today, um, you know, I want us to be conscious of that. Um, you know, what can we do, you know, outside or should be done outside and what do we think possibly can be done internally? And, I'm optimistic that more can be shifted into the internal side, mainly from just my observation and dealing with uh, city staff uh, and leadership in the commission, seeing that there is a sense of uh, need to respond to our inquiries and concerns uh, from the public. So with that, I just want to open up with you guys. If anyone wants to chime in first and kind of share the comments, and then we'll go into the, uh, the items. You want to start, Tim? Uh, yeah, in the interim, I've, I've come across a lot of people who their number one concern with the water is the quality of the water. Okay. That's what I hear over and over again is, is the quality of the water. <clears throat> I did my research, I kind of altered it a little bit. Um, I, I looked through as many water companies as I can and every last one of them charges the 25%. They do. And we all know that's my, um, that's yeah. my hot button issue. To Deltona Water's credit, their rates are easy to find on the website. Okay. It's easy to find. Other websites, they're buried, and it's very difficult to find. You know what I found out? Sorry to interrupt you, because I met with a city today, a city official today from another city, that they are grandfathered under old rules that allow them to charge 150%, by the way. And I'm not saying our situation is good, but there are some that are charging even more. And that doesn't justify our fee, but I want to let you know. Which, which has led to a conclusion of mine, is that this, the, to have real change it's going to have to come from the state because for me to have an equal right I have to be annexed by the city to be able to have a say in Deltona water or any other citizen anywhere else in the state that has to pay the 25 percent surcharge for them to have a voice they should be able to have some sort of participation within within the election process within that within that city yeah. because we're directly affected by by their votes on on what happens with the water company. So it goes back to what Santiago said, taxation without representation. Bingo, that's exactly it. And it, that seems to me it goes to the core of, they do it because it's the law and they can and they, they all do because it's easy revenue. But I have no voice, I can't, I can't vote in District 5, that's where I'm closest to. You know, I think, Anybody can tell me, but I think that's the best argument. As you know, I've tried advocating in, in Tallahassee regarding that, but I think that's the best argument because when it comes to utilities, most legislators or, or the, the state would say, well, you're governed either by the PSC, which you can go in front of and speak in their your representation, or the city commission, but I get it. You don't have no, no accountability to them. They have no accountability to you, sorry. Correct. I don't disagree with what you're saying. So that would be my two cents in the interim. <clears throat> well, I looked at, um, oh, I'm going to agree with Tim, the over, it, it's pretty popular. Um, oh, and just to let everybody know, my name is Valerie Madney. Um, the consensus uh, overwhelmingly is the quality of the water. They're not getting a bang for their buck. You know, they're paying for water that they don't use or what have you. Um, I went on to a couple of websites um, with cities that are very similar to ours in size. Uh, Palm Coast, uh, their population is about 80,000, 88,000 I think it was. 
um, and Lake One, whose I population. As well, yeah. Did you look at Lake One too? Yeah, and um, Lakeland is a population of 110,000, Palm Coast is 87,000. Um, if you have the opportunity, uh, Palm Coast, their website is phenomenal. Um, easy to get around, you don't have to look in search engines or what have you. Um, but what I did come up with, um, what they have laid out in their system, um, are some waters and frequently asked questions. <laughs> Um, as to why I have smells, um, is my water safe to drink, is it safe for pets, um, why is the hardness, because I think we had tried to define um, the last meeting, what is quality of water, what is that quality, what does it mean to all of us, and I think there's a whole variety here, but um, a lot of it comes down to, and I will say that I'm guilty of it, um, is your own maintenance in your own home. Um, in draining your water tank. Um, we all know we probably should do it, but do we do it or do we put it on the back burner? That can cause some issues. Um, sure cause some issues if you're not draining your water tank um, with the sediment and everything else you like that. The hot water heater or? Drain mm -hmm. the hot water heater. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, um, I have all these. Uh, so they put that out to the general public? This is on FYI? their website. Oh. All these questions that they want you know, our customers or their customers have, they can go right on their website and look it up and, and get an answer to that question. Um, just to give you a little history um, on Palm Coast, I believe they have 42,000 water customers. Um, they have 42,000 utility accounts serving 70,000 plus residents in Palm Coast. And they're divided, they have, outer, uh, they have the uh, outer city limits and they have the city limits. Um, if you go over the bridge, they serve the water, but they don't serve the sewer, and it's done by a private company. Um, their impact fees, uh, for somebody who's building a brand new home, they have to pay for the water in the sewer, um, and that's $8,953 the builder's going to pay to hook them up. Um, I don't know what our impact fees are here when we have brand new homes, but I know we've got a thousand new homes, so it'd be interesting to see. Um, I was told we collect impact fees. Well, City of Deltona and sometimes county waives those. Depends on how good a negotiator the building the mm -hmm. builder is. I know in uh, uh, Lake uh, Town Estates, <coughs> the roads were private, <coughs> so basically the builder didn't pay any. In, in, any impact fees. Sorry, I'm out of breath. My four drivers uh, taxing. Yeah, right. I understand that. I drive that every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do. C could you state your name if you uh, would like to speak? If you would just state your name for the record. Um, so Kenneth Hawkins. I'm sorry? Kenneth Hawkins. Okay. Kenneth Hawkins. Hawkins. Okay. And then and if it, we're going to be very fluid with this because this is it's a small group. And then uh, just to kind of keep order, I'm going to recognize anybody, just kind of get my attention. That way someone can finish their comment, and I'll certainly recognize everybody. This is a small group. Mm -hmm. So this is a city that um, incorporated, just became new in 1999. Um, so they're kind of on the same um, path with Deltona and incorporating it and what have you. Um, I looked at the city of Lakeland. They, again, um, they're similar. They've got a lot of lakes like we do, uh, they provide sewer, reclaimed stormwater, electricity in their bills and such. Uh, their impact fees are quite as high um, as what Palm Coast is, um, but they're a little bit different. They do not have a rate increase coming this year. Palm Coast does, but they didn't know what the percentage was yet. Um, but I do like the fact that um, their website, uh, especially Palm Coast, was just phenomenal um, to get around there and take a look at it. But I think that's something that we can take away from um, what they have there for their residents. Um, and they've gotten a lot of accolades um, since they've become a city for their fiscal responsibility, their fire department. Um, it, it, the list goes on and on and on. Um, that they have listed there. So um, I don't mind leaving this with somebody. I'd like it, yes, yes. if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, to be able to take a look at it, but um, I think it's a good, you know,
PSA, public service announcement that um, we can share um, or put on a website to... Um, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Right. You know, if someone's right. done it. Yeah, I was impressed with it. And if anybody wants to look at it, I'll leave it up here. I'll next year, I'll be able to. Good. So that's okay. about, about it. Dana McCool, for the record. Um, the continuing uh, number one comment to me are about rates and the disparity of rates. How can a family sometimes uh, have $35 water bill and then a couple, two people have a $300 water bill right on up? So in my mind and based on what I've heard if, if we can put together some type of geographical picture and get some dadgum data to find out where these bills are I know that Munis can spit out information we pay good money for it Munis is the software system if you're not if you're not familiar it's a software system that is used for billing for pulling up data um, that is that is used by the water department and people want an explanation of rates we all know that we're having to take a rate increase and you know as was discussed before this just didn't happen last night these rates we're a young city and they you know I can't speak professionally to the builders in the city and who was in charge you know when we started and how it was structured but there was just a lot of ball dropping done when we were creating this city as far as infrastructure and we're paying for it now and the sad fact is that the chickens have come home to roost and we have to fix this and what we you know what what i would like to see is there be an equal burden right an equal distribution of responsibility placed on each of the residents for that. People in, in Tim's position here and, and people outside the city limits are really, really struggling. Think about this right here. You get a $300 water bill, whether it's correct or incorrect, you get that. That's like people's car payment, that's insurance, that's groceries, that's whatever. So rates continue to be the number one thing in, in you know, in our book, uh, as far as what I have been looking at, at the rates and and the the water bills, the mysterious water bills, I should call that. And you know, just to be perfectly honest, I think more and more looking at this and and seeing situations and hearing about situation, it's human error. You know, so I would have to say that training is like you know when we start getting into this is number one. I would like for there to be, and I know it's a segue into our next discussion, but I would like there to be some serious discussion about the software. I think that the, the, the people have a right to know, like, how do you get into the software? Where does the human error happen? Did you put an extra zero on the bill, like when you're entering, right, and stuff like that? So rates and the technical, the IT aspect of this, because this is, these bills are happening, the crazy ones at $30, and then the $300, and then back down to 30 That's what I continue to hear. So, <coughs> well, please. I, I'm just going to say with you, Dana, I, I am totally, I totally agree with you. It may not be popular, um, but I think we all need to share the burden as a city. Um, we're only as good as what we put into our city, and we all live here. Um, and for the folks, you know, that are paying that extra 25%, that's not fair for them to have to carry that burden. But um, I also don't want to see a, a mass exodus out of here um, because of, of water. You know, um, if we all pay our fair share um, to keep the city going, because whatever happened in the past, we've got to look at the future yep. and go forward yep. and, and do what we need to do. But we also need to have our commissioners um, follow through on this and, and not fall on deaf ears mm -hmm. um, when there's concerns because um, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, I just started getting involved um, in May and I've been here for 22 years and 
Um, I just go about my business, but um, I just think that um, what I've seen from the outside looking in and getting involved, uh, some of the things have fallen on deaf ears um, with concerns and what have you. So that would be my only concern is that um, we as a committee, when we make our recommendations or what have you, that um, they're going to... I think that all eyes are on Deltona right now, mm -hmm. you know, eyes on Deltona water, and I think that public pressure on this matter, and I think that we're, in, we're invested in this process now, and I think mm -hmm. that we do have the investment, and, you know, listen, the city manager and the mayor and the commissioners have been propelling this forward. With it, trying desperately for transparency, wanting the residents to get involved, soliciting the residents to get involved. We've done a lot of soliciting, and while I'm so appreciative for everyone that has shown up here, sometimes you would think that it, we're talking about water, that more would be involved, so we really have to solicit the residents' involvement. I'm, I'm, I'm so. I'm hearing two things. It's the quality and the rate disparity. Yep. And I think that should be the the main focus. Yep. And um, as you were mentioning the software, I, I, I'm thinking in my head, I wish I had a, a customer portal that I can log into and actually track, easily track my water use from one month to the next. That would be a really nice thing. And, and, and the other thing with, with rates, um, because I was looking at Winter Haven, their water company, if you just go into like their Google reviews, same exact issues, people getting their water turned off for, you know, just for being a little bit late, getting it turned back on, they got all these fees that they got to pay. So, it, I don't know how to say it, but with the rate disparity, we also need a way for Deltona Water to have some sort of compassion for those issues that people come up with with the rates. That's going to be customer service, yeah. and this is just going to be I an know. educational, you know what I mean? This is going to be an educational I think thing. that's going to be largely in the area that we put our separate recommendations. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Rate disparity and water quality. So let me ask, are you, are you done? I'm done, yeah. Um, the, the surcharge, and I, I know you mentioned it also in the rates and the disparity, would, would a good question for them to research for us is, and I don't think it would be that difficult math, but to, if we were to eliminate the 25% surcharge and spread that amongst the entire customer base, what would that look like? Yes, as I think. A, as a customer charge, right? Because there's a base charge, right? If it's, I'll make it up. If it's $10 today, would it be $11 tomorrow? I don't know the answer, but that would be a good answer to get back to the, to the city commission and to us? I, I yeah. I, listen. I don't live in with, uh, we don't live within the city limits. We, you know, we can't expect to perhaps pay the same as the city residents, but there has to be some kind of flexibility in that rate because it's really, um, I mean, I expect to pay more because I'm outside of the city limits because the lines are farther away. Mm -hmm. I get that. But the 25% on top of the sewer rates. Same punitive rather than it, it, operational. It, it, yeah, it really does. For especially for when someone just moved into the neighborhood, and they get their water bill, and they say, "If I would have had this before information the before, there's no way I would have bought it." So, yeah. is it fair to say let's add that it's one of our questions yeah. to look at, right? Yeah. And, you know, let's get, let's get I like how many how many people are paying the twenty five percent rate yeah. structure. What is that amount? Yeah. And what is what, that? And what would that look like if it were spread out over evil and equal? Right. And how does that relate to our enterprise fund rules, right? How that well, that, yeah, it, it'll be fine. I, I remember that from within the days because the enterprise fund, the purpose, this is my recollection, the purpose of the enterprise fund is to make sure that the, the monies do not mix between city general revenue mm -hmm. and water revenue. So that's why when we, when we bought the water department, it was all specific to got to keep it somewhat independent from a financial perspective. Listen, if you have a three hundred dollar, what is your average bill, Tim? Uh, it ranges anywhere from two fifty to three oh seven. Okay, so think about that. That's almost a year for me. Give you a fifteen. Same. Give you a fifteen percent cut. In. No, just, give you a fifteen percent cut, right? Monthly. That I'm just going to say that is 
substantial or 20 percent so that's 60 dollars that you can put back into the economy so it seems rather punitive it goes along the lines of just because you can don't mean that yeah. you should you know so what does that look like and i think that is one of the most important questions for yeah. auditors for you yeah, know to give us a report on what yeah. even if they bow it down in tears yes terry I'd really like to know the business case for the 25 percent. More like, money, more money, more money. Well, I'm joking, but that's yeah, really I mean, what it comes I, down I, to. I get that, but I mean, operationally, I'd, I'd like to know, I'd like for the auditors to tell me what does, uh, from an operational standpoint, what does it actually cost mm -hmm. to deliver the water to mm -hmm. the folks outside of the city? Like, yeah, and, and I could... Because if we don't dig into that, if we just say... Let's just say some kind of way at some point we somebody manages to reduce the rate from 25 down to 15. Well, eventually they're going to say, well, we need to change that. Well, we need to increase it. And without actually having the business case to substantiate it or not, you know, you just can, you really kind of open yourself back up to to just having this arbitrary number. And if they're doing these rate studies, I, I, I just ask, and I'm asking because I, gen, I really don't know, I genuinely don't know. If they're doing the rate studies, they should have that information, right, in order to assess what that rate should be, that they should have the cost of delivery price. They don't have if that. If it cost me, they if it cost them, if, yeah, if they cost, if it costs five dollars, then why are they charging you fifty dollars to deliver it? I, I can say they don't have it. I agree with you. And the yeah. reason they don't have it is because it's not required right. to be done. And right. I put forward an amendment two years ago, two years ago in the legislature to say that in order to charge any fee outside, you had to justify the additional cost yeah. to deliver the services. Well, it was a tough one, as you can imagine, but. Um, just because, because you can doesn't make it right, and I want our city to hear that. Mm -hmm. I want our legislators to hear that, mm -hmm. because this is a real problem. We are having, we have crisis in our area. As far as affordability, we already have a problem. And I'm not trying to get off track, but it's part of the overall picture. We're having a problem with people paying their bills in Deltona, because we don't have affordable housing. There's food shortage. People are not being able, I mean, there are people in this room that work with food pantries, and we understand this. It's part of the overall picture. So I would like our city to hear that now, okay? This is this is important, and the state to hear that. This is important, you know? Okay. All right, we're going to get back on the rails. Yep. All right. Um, but I think, th I think we, should, we, we agreed that we would ask that question, have them answer that yeah. question on, on the surcharge. Um, did you now, uh, you guys are okay with just, let's go down the list and yep. quickly. What yep. I'd like to also keep a focus as I did in my open, I think we said quality and rates, and we definitely said service and service delivery, right? <coughs> yeah. um, and so as we looked at each topic, I know we went into each one in depth uh, last time we met, but do we still feel um, that is that absolutely needed to fix the priorities that we have in this city. And, and the only reason I say it that way is to, to try to be cost conscious. So our direction here, as I am to understand it, is that we are going to, once again, we're going to peruse this list. We are going to think about what we can handle in-house, mm -hmm. because I think that we would agree with interaction with the water department, right, that, that there are some changes made. Um, but keeping in mind also that um, if we do not include it in the audit, it doesn't give them room wiggle room to you know what i mean because we can't force them to do any of this but i'm just we're throwing out the olive branch here saying you know that we're depending on you to do this yeah am, am i to understand that i think you're right yes okay and i'm an optimist right and so i i certainly um believe in sometimes extending the olive branch Okay. Well, I, I'd be more, how about from this perspective, I'd be more apt to, to extend an olive branch if we had an idea of a cost breakdown. Of what it costs to Of, of what the, the audit is going to cost. If we had a, a more of a menu, you know, like this will cost blah, 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 blah. And we won't do that until we sent, turn it in. Correct, yeah, because we talked about possibly doing yeah. a la carte type of stuff, yeah. uh, quoting. And we can do that based on each category. Well, how about if we do this? What do we, why don't we put a list? Here's my thought process. Put a list together, what we think can be done internally with the city, and what we need 
from the outside? What, what are the must-haves that we need to know? And can it be done internally, or do we need to send That's it That's how we're going down this okay. list right here. So let's, okay. just start, let's just start going through that and, and go through that exercise. And if we feel that it should be on the, possibly on the, uh, the audit side, mm -hmm. we'll just, by category, do a la carte. Yep. Is that fair? Yep. And request that as part of the RFP. Okay. All right. Uh, financial planning and management. Um, we'll just go through the subcategories. This is reclaimed water. Uh, we got here base rate, golf course. I'm looking at your notes. Because <laughs> I have the same notes. Uh, we talked about 25% surcharge. Um, do we want to go uh, have them look at the operations of or the policies around the reclaimed water and whatever? Do we know how many people are using reclaimed water? I think there's just a couple of subdivisions that are currently tied in. I would say no. Four? Is that four? Yeah. And then no, the golf course. That's in-house. I, in I think that that would be I for in-house and, you know, differentiate A for audit. But I noticed that the the financial planning and management, if you look at the notes that we took last time, necessity of 25% yep. surcharge and the bonds, you know, to, to take a to look there, at the bonds. Yeah. Okay, I didn't see that. Okay, I can B. There's B over there. Yeah, I see it. So we'll keep those in there financial as planning. a la carte, yep. uh, question for financial management. Yep. Um, Make a note here, keep. And then the golf course. Can I pause you just a second? You mentioned reclaimed water. Does anybody know what the rate is going to be for that reclaimed water it's, that they charge the residents? It's already set. I don't know what the number they is. They won't give it to you. I called twice to find out. He said, we haven't come up with that yet. I said, wait a minute. Some people are paying it already. Huh? Some people are paying that already. Really? Yeah, as far as I know. Why they won't give it out? I think it's on their website. I think yeah. I didn't see it. You didn't? Oh, oh I can't believe it. You mean the reclaim is going in the right time? Yeah. I mean, shouldn't it be paying the same rate, but no, I think they pay it. I think it's going to be the same rate, but no, I think they pay it. Oh, you probably, yeah. No. The golf course gets it for free. Free. <laughs> And there was, a, a, there was a relatively good reason for that. For that, I think there wasn't there like yes. an overflow or something. Yep. And no one would take yeah. it at the time. Reclaim rates, all usage, a dollar sixty-seven per thousand gallons. Yeah, I thought that was seven. That's right. the current rates right now. In Deltona? Well, it was effective. Yeah. Yeah. Dollar per, per thousand gallon. Right. That's then, depending on your meter size. Yeah, it goes, it goes up. up. It goes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, human capital management, staffing, training, development, workforce management. Yep. Now, in house, I would yeah, say. I was going to say because that could tie into our customer service type of stuff and service delivery and policies. Is that, is that fair, Dana? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? I, you know, I just so looked we, at th let three and four, and we were like regulatory compliance. I mean, they're, we're a pretty big city, and I'm sure that John, because he's very capable, is on that. But you know, even the best of counties, this big audit, the KPMG audit that we talked about for um, Charlotte County, was if if you look um, if you look here, there was one of the things in the red. Uh, maybe it's not on this one. Hold on a second in there. Yeah, look at your um, second handout, the one that's in color, right here. And I want you to look at the ones in red. And in the, the red, information technology, human capital management, customer service and billing, capital project governance, right? Okay. Those are all red. And I just, it's a higher risk. It's rated at a four, the highest risk that you can. And, and everything within that box right there is, is high to moderate risk, you know. So, and if you look at, on our... Deltona audit scope, if you look at the um, regulatory compliance, I mean, it's up there in a low risk, right, low environment. Did you find it, Tim? Absolutely. And go ahead and listen. So I just think that we need to, I think that we need to keep human capital management um, in the scope of the audit because I think that that ties in. If you've got your hands on it, I think that it ties into what needs to be taken a look at. I think that the professionals, because of the shape that we're in, right, mm -hmm. the professionals need to say yay or nay on that. So I think they help you define what human yes, capital that's management. That's exactly what I was thinking. I don't know what they're looking for. Yeah. What would an auditor look at? Yeah, D they will look at the staffing ratio. Okay, they will look at training and development. Are they using the best practices? And what I mean by that is. 
Are, is the staff doing everything that they should be doing as far as billing? Is there oversight? I'm just using that for an example. Is there oversight in the billing? What happens with training when there's a human error and causes somebody to get a $20,000 bill? Or how does that happen to begin with? Those kind of things. Workforce management and strategy. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. I think, I, well, and I'm not going to disagree with you, but I don't know if it needs, it, it's, a, it's a snowball effect. So if your information technology is not adequate and you don't have the safeguards in place to be able to stop something like that from happening. That's why it's in the red here. Right. That information technology, and it's on down the list, but it's, yeah. But I think your biggest problem is the information technology. That's a, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll find that's out, with your right? meters, your hand devices, yeah. fat fingering it. Um, how is it when it gets to billing, you know, is the technology there to flag it, to have somebody put their eyes on it, mm -hmm. um, so on and so forth. So, um, so did, did, I'm sorry, does Delta and Water use any consultants? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. they do. Yeah. do. Do they have an IT consultant, I wonder? I don't well, know. They're a great consultant. When you say, do they use consultants? Well, they, they, use, use? they use engineering firms also that, that consult uh, with water and, 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 and public works and all that. I know from one of the days I was here. So I don't know about the IT, but it's a very, you know, it's a, it's a, yeah, and it goes with, I mean, you, you can't have one without the other. You can't right. have the staff, you can't have the IT and the staff not match up. Listen, you got bells and whistles all over the place with what Tyler Technology sold our city, okay? Do we know how to apply those? They're not doing us any good. So they go hand in hand. I think one is just as important as the other. You know, it's like putting a 16 year old in a performance F1 car. You know what I mean? I think you convinced the jury. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I think you can put a 16 year old in information technology and do better than something yeah. else. <laughs> also, true story. Oh. Terry, you wanted to share something else? No, I actually you said you convinced the jury because my thought is this. Any IT or billing, any billing system that allows for an extra zero in a customer's yep. in a customer's reading, and there's no, there's nothing to catch that, that's a problem, and we need to be looking at that from an extra. Good point. And, and John is on the ball too, because I will tell you this: yes. one of the small yes. things that there was how some of the higher billing was allowed to escape, is that there was a threshold set on your water bill and their internal controls. And it was set at like 100%. So your water bill, right, had to be, and he lowered, exactly. The 20, right, or something he, like he Yes, he lowered the threshold. So they're doing good stuff, but I would like for there to be an accounting and measurements and systems, and, you know. And Reports. Exactly. I like it. Okay, so, sorry guilty. about that. I don't yeah. mean to harp on that. Yeah, I think. Your information technology. Regulatory compliance. I certainly would like to see if, we, if Deltona Water is complying with the regulatory compliance side of things. Uh, yeah, I, I said outside on that one. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so we're on the same page. Outside, okay. right? Keep, I'm, I'm yeah. putting the word keep here. I mean, keep it in order. Um, internal controls. What are we talking now again? I think that we said internal controls would go with, you know, human capital management, kind of, because okay. th that's going to put stops in place and it's gonna, there's going to be checks and balances if that's done properly. Anybody object to, to striking that? No. Which one is it? Number, number five. five. Number five. No. Oh, that was the uh, research. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, okay. Internal reporting accountability. I see star, star here. Reading. Accountability, strategic planning, internal performance standards and controls, communication reporting. Do you have any information from KPMG on that? No. Well, we do. It's in the larger report. If you go to the larger report, there, there is. I actually have it. Where is it at? Which one page, Terry? Um, the internal control. Yeah. The dive. Is it part of the dive deeper area? Five, five, six. I actually like all of those categories. Um, and I would like to put it in the a la carte side of things because, you know, accountability, right? That speaks for itself. Strategic planning, do they have a process in place for future strategic planning, right? Um, internal performance standards, we all talked a little bit about staffing, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it ties in a little earlier, but um, from that perspective, accountability, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to add it to the, that entire whole section to the a la carte. 
And I think that that's why we put three and six. If you notice, three and six are kind of looped together there in my notes. And they I think are. that that's they are. You, you yeah. see the little thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's coming back to me. Yeah, I think that's where we put it there. No, I don't think so. I think we'll just keep it. Is everybody okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, internal reporting. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll know what the auditor will know with that. Uh, you know. Purchasing, I don't see anything there. I, I think I made the comment last uh, time we met that a lot of that is largely already controlled by state law procurement process. I don't know what we're going to find there or what we're looking for there. Mm. I mean, we can disagree whether they should have bought blue pens or red pens, right? yeah. but that's just a policy. We moved on. Yeah. We moved on. Okay. So we're scratching seven. Yeah. Okay. Any objection to that? No. <laughs> we, it looks like we scratched eight from our previous notes. <coughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, number nine, uh, capital projects governance, cost of and finance. Well, we talked about this: cost of financing and financing, capital improvements, CIP development, priority setting, and budgeting. I actually like those topics. Anybody object? Mm -mm. To stay internal. Or yeah, no? just keep it as part of our no, not internal. No, external. 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 Yeah, okay. when I when I say okay, I mean like to go part of our a la carte yeah. RFP. Okay. And I'm talking uh, A, B, we crossed out C for a reason. Can, can because that went up with capital up with management. Capital, okay, okay capital. so we'll do A, B, yeah. and D. Yeah. Community engagement. I don't <laughs> see any notes next to that. What, what, are, what are we discussing? I think that that will come along with, with three and six. Yeah, three think, and six. I think we talked about... Um, what do they do in the community and doing a survey and putting that in the bill? That's right, the survey. That mm -hmm. is right. And That's that right. can be done internally. 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 Yeah. Right. I'm going to put it internal. Information technology. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah, that was. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's going to be keep it. Question. We scratched that one out, customer demand and growth, because that was going to kind of like think, be wrapped up in um, capital projects, yep. governance. Yeah. Customer service and billing. I think we should do a deep dive on that one, because that's probably going to largely yep. be internal, right? Yep. Does everybody, is it okay? Let's, um, what but are you okay. Did you say internal for customer service and billing? Keep it internal or no out external out. audit. External oh, okay. No, I did say something different. Right. Deep yeah. dive, yeah. Yeah. Because that has, if you look, and if for those listing, when uh, number thirteen on our scope says customer service and billing, A would be call center, B website, I guess, yeah. Yeah, C helps. ops and engineering, D billing, E payment and collection, yeah. and F technology initiatives. And I'm saying that. And for I mixed my, my cables here a little bit. What I was talking about, there are some customer service related things that we're going to recommend separately. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Number 15. Well, 14 looks stricken out. Engineering, yeah. we felt, I guess there was nothing there. Yeah. There. Relationship and contract management, number 15. I don't recall much discussion on that one. No. Mm -hmm. We'll strike that. Strategic planning, wasn't that duplicative? Yeah, it was. In number 12, with customer yeah, demand and growth. That's, okay. and that's looking into the future yeah. and yeah. knowing what's on the horizon and, and new customers, new base, what are we doing? Yeah. But I think that has to do with um, capital projects and governance. You know, yeah, I think that'll that come along. Them. That'll That's a Let's pull along with the, yeah. with the other stuff. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, number 17, wastewater collection and treatment. I'm looking here. Base that went up to two. Well, didn't we put that on number two, like number two and... Number 17 and number two. two. Yeah. Yeah, that was the golf course, reclaim water, base rates. Okay. All right. Because, yeah, you, I see the line is sticking out here. Number 18, Water treatment and distribution. We talked about chemicals, water quality, right? Mm -hmm. um, and my, our, my guess is for them to review, we keep that, right? Mm -hmm. And for them to review uh, state records and internal records yep. to well, determine an analysis of where Deltona water quality sits. Well, right? What was that in the news today about they're going to be pumping water into Borrowed the springs? Yeah. yeah. What is 
I think that's helping the, the recharge or something? It is. It's recharge. helping the recharge. And there are multiple cities working with that. The Orange City, I know, is working with it. The um, land. De, De, I don't know if DeBerry is. So. Yeah, Deltona. But there's some, there's West, it's West Volusia water something. But I know that Dave Denny is sitting on well, the planning with that also. Is he? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's some has it ties into the water flow, minimum water flow stuff at okay. Blue Spring. That and that goes. That's going to go with the engineer. You know what I mean? The, mm -hmm. the capital projects governance. They'll. So we're going to keep the water treatment and distribution, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now there was something about in the commissioners' meeting the other night um, that the city were not following the guidelines. The stricter guidelines were out of the 16 cities, Deltona. Did remember the gentleman that got up there and spoke about that? About how we're not um, following the guidelines with the water treatment or what have you. We're following the state, but Volusia County adopted this guideline where. Um, do you remember that, Terry? Mm hmm. Well, this time I remember what it was. Right, and we're the only city out of all the 16 cities in Volusia County that hasn't adopted it. And the committee, the, count, the dais commissioners, we're going to look into it and find out why aren't we doing that. Well, that's going to go as part of, you know, water treatment water distribution. Water treatment distribution. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if we're going to leave that internally. I don't know. You know, because they're going to look into it and find out. Well, that goes with not. water quality. If we're, we're looking at water quality, quality. right? Yeah. So what, what did we say with number six? I think I didn't mind Six my and three. Are together. Are together, no, no, no. yeah. Okay. Let me, if, if I'm going to, without, unless somebody wants to go into detail, I'm just going to recap to make sure I don't miss anything because I'm going to be giving this to the before, staff. Before you, go ahead. before you do that, um, I know Santiago has mentioned a couple times uh, about the chemicals that are used to treat the yeah. water. Um, I think the, the, the bid or RFP or, um, should be specific that we're looking at chemicals that are in, that's in the water used for treatment and, and all of that. So I think that should be That's fine, okay. probably more specific than not. I, I'm okay with that. And what's and what's considered yeah. safe standards? Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Let me do a brief, brief recap, making sure I'm keeping and changing whatever we said. Number one, we said we keep. Number three and six are together, right? Um, number two, I jumped. Sorry, we said we go internal with that, talking about. Um, Reclaimed water stuff and base rate and golf course, right? Mm -hmm. We remove that from the audit request. Um, number nine is where I'm jumping next. We're keeping A, B, and D, right? Mm -hmm. uh, number ten that that is regarding uh, internal survey, survey of the customers base internally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Community what? engagement, right? Yep. Yeah. Number eleven. We got A, B, C, all of them. Mm -hmm. Then we jump to number 13, billing, keep all of those categories, A through F, right? Yep. And then we, I jump to number 18, water treatment and distribution to include chemical analysis and stuff like that, right? Um, did I miss anything? And then we're gonna try to keep these categories, we're gonna request to see if, if um, uh, our purchasing department can put this in a way that they can a la carte this, yeah, right, um, for us and for the city commission, yeah. Um, and I guess wrapping this list up, is it okay since we have some more time for for us to start talking about some service related things that we want to put as recommendations? I know we talked about ideas on being more sympathetic on disconnects, um, <coughs> looking into other processes, right? Do we want to yeah. open that door and go, go down that path? I do think so. If you will look at your handout uh, in the orange here, it's on page six, and it, this is part of the overall larger, for you, for everyone listening, I'm gonna just do a brief rundown um, because these are the things that we are, are talking about tackling, and I'm just doing this for those that are listening yeah, that can't yeah, hear this. It. Yeah, we all need um, a refresher. Yeah, this is, um, this is one of our you know top things is the customer service and billing and if you look at uh here 
Um, we talk about business services should develop a comprehensive call center knowledge database to provide customer account specialists with easy, accessible, and searchable source for answering customer inquiries. Yeah. So I'm just, you know what I mean? I'm trying to, to give them an idea. Um, they should enhance and implement procedures to consistently and thoroughly record customer service activity to the customer's account record in their system. Munis should have something like that. Um, they should enable continuous monitoring and improvement of customer service functions by customer survey results, implement a back and survey option for customers to complete following a conversation, um, leverage the the system and phone system to identify call trends. Terry, you've talked about this a lot. First time, resolution, repeat callers, et cetera. We don't have any of that type of data. Yeah. Uh, customer transfers, yeah, resolution, total time for issue resolution, for example, if a caller is being forwarded to operations, duration until the problem is fully solved. So. It, it, it go down the list and I will tell if you're listening and if you're interested in this, you can go to the Charlotte County, Florida audit. It is a KPMG audit and you can take a look at these things. So it does dive deep. This is a dive deeper stuff and you guys are reading that right now. Um, you know what I mean? This is what the kind of stuff that we want them to I look at. I think all these things could pertain here. I've, I'm, looking, I'm still reading the last three. but. Well, I can tell you, I mean, I wrote a whole list here of all the different things from training to quality. Um, and again, going back to this, quality calls, are, they, uh, are all the calls monitored? What's the protocol for feedback um, and coaching opportunities for the staff there? If there's human performance um, concerns, you know, mistakes or what have you. Um, what are the behaviors looked at? from a QA perspective um, in scoring them. What are those behaviors that you're going to look at to score them to say, you know, are they performing well or not? Um, so you want to pick those behaviors. Are there any weekly, monthly calibrations that are done? You know, is anybody meeting with them to um, let them know, you know, um, how those calls went and where we could have done better? Um, and if they are being done, who are they being done with? Are, is it amongst other specialists? Is it with team leads? Is it with supervisors? Um, the other thing for training, um, is there a formal training conducted? If so, how long? Is it a computer-based training? Um, if not, how is it? The, how are they learning? Are they hiring them and then just having them come in and sit with somebody else and doing side-by-sides? Um, are there statistical performances to adhere to? And yeah. that's that's that is all of you know. Mm -hmm. I, and I'm I don't know who all the quotes are going out to the the request yet. Put out to I don't, the, I don't to know either. But listen, and I'm not saying that like I know enough about auditing to say that you know KPMG, but they've they've been in business for a long time and they have this broken down. And I just think that one of the caveats, if they will go through and reads, you know what I mean? I know that they have their own systems in place, but if you take the time and you go by and read this, I think that it's just kind of mandatory reading for, you know what I mean, to define the scope. And, and I think that, like you're saying, um, Valerie, and like we've talked about, that definitely customer service and billing, you know, they, uh -huh. they should go through this deeper dive here on that. And the, that and the IT and the qual I mean, I think really we've broken down our three things, right? Water quality, right? Number two. Um, Disparity. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, rate quality, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, but how are they trained? How do they handle the call? If it's an escalated call, if you're not satisfied yeah. by what's said, what's your next step and who takes that? If they don't resolve it, where's the next step and where does that go? You know, and how timely. Are the time frames that are placed on there to call the customer back? You don't want to leave them hanging or too bad, too sad, you know. Are there incentives in place for employees to help resolve? Other? Right, right. Do you have subject matter experts that come in and talk to them? You know, not everybody's going to know about meters, you know, and what can cause, you know, water leaks. I mean, in reading the information from Palm Coast, that little flapper in your toilet, it's got a bad little bugger, isn't it? It's a bad little bugger. And then I know um, 
the uh, somebody had had uh, mentioned about the ring on their toilet they can see black. Well, from the chemicals that you put into your into the water or what have you, it starts eating away at that flapper. The, the mm -hmm. And that's what's coming around the ring of your toilet. So it's not necessarily mold or something from your water, but the that's in that. That's in the. That's in that. I like that. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, can we agree know. that like, okay, so what we want to look at: quality of water, rates, customer service, and IT. Mm -hmm. Can we? I like that. I think that covers what we. That covers sort of where. Yes. Yeah. Um, the information that Valerie is, is reviewing from a customer operation standpoint can we maybe add that information as a supplement mm -hmm. yeah and i that think we, that like we definitely uh, want the auditors to deep dive into exactly and, and i think in making that request you know for that deep for that are you, deep talking, dive. About, are you talking about what she pulled off from palm coast mm, no the, what i'm reading off of right. here what i've written down because oh, she's oh, in the bit she's yeah, yeah, in yeah, the yeah, business yeah, yeah. and yeah. i and i think yeah. that when they do their presentation i think yes. that that'll be the time to yeah ask those burning questions and yeah. then they will understand what like is important Correct. to us yes. right and i think that because those are the detailed questions you were going through yeah Indeed. right more detail and everything else like that because you know you can have somebody if they don't have and i'm not saying they don't have call center experience can i have those copies of uh, the questions i'm sorry of the, the, the pages you downloaded from palm coast oh yeah 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 okay. kpmg has extensive questions yeah well, I, and I know but that not everybody does. No, and that's the thing to know the the ins and outs of a call center and what the need is. And you know, you're asking people that come in that are, um, you know, they don't know the business per se. And, and, and I mean that business. exactly, and that's why we're here, and that's why when they do the presentation mm -hmm. that we have oh, eagle so eagle eyes here to ask these burning deeper dive mm -hmm. questions. You know, because yeah. within I think that each one of us have like. Uh, a gift here, you know what I mean, to, to dive I, deeper. I, I, uh, the thought also is hitting my head. Is, what about the people that are in the field reading the meters? I'm sorry. What repeat? about the folks in the field that are actually reading the meters? What kind of training? Uh, uh, is there enough of them? Because I've uh, that's human capital management right. right there, and that's you know I mean what did we say? Internal reporting and accountability and human capital management. I mean, can we kind of say that that goes under? I, I think that three should be replaced, not customer service, but human capital management, I think, is slash human customer. capital management. Does that directly affect the customer? Staffing, training and development, workforce management strategy. That's human capital well, management one is, there. One is call center management and one is human, human resource. I mean, human capital management. They're very different. Well, call center is listed in number 13. Okay. Right. Number two, number three, staffing, training, and development in the workforce management. I mean, that's probably uh, predicting how many calls, you know, at, uh, like um, how many people are going to be staffed, how many people are going to be on vacation, how many calls do they anticipate? It, Is the staff staffing. qualified to do what they're doing? Right. Training and development, I mean, who's monitoring that? So I think we got that captured here. And I think we're going in the weeds. Okay. Let's wait till we get the consultants and the okay. proposals. All those are good questions, by the way, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we should ask them when they come. Is your proposal going to include this, 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 and this, yeah. and this, right? Yeah. As a part of our, you know, our recommendation. And, and I think that yes, and I think that during their their presentation is when we yeah. go, go get into there. The, get into the weeds mm -hmm. a little bit. We yeah. just kind of look at exactly basically you know, functions. So do we have our? Do you think that I, we have our areas here? I, I think so. I think the, so. The I agree. I agree. I did want to talk a little bit more about. The customer service side of thing, because I remember over the last two meetings, there were a lot more ideas that were thrown out, and I recall two. Um, one was the dispute resolution process. Um, we talked about to include an option for delayed payment. Somebody mentioned that yep. if someone has a $300 bill, right, right and this needs to be a written policy, mm -hmm. and they normally have a $25 bill, well, you know what? Maybe the policy should be pay your $25, this is in dispute. Doesn't mean it's been forgiven. Let us work and you do your research, check if you had the pipe broken, and then the next step gets initiated. But don't force, don't cut somebody's water off because they can't pay the 325. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I think that was one of the ideas that was thrown yep. out. Um, we talked about a low bill rollover, if not paid. I think somebody said if there was a small bill amount. I, I, oh, to yeah. interrupt their services for non payment Correct. There is one right now, it's $30. How much? 30 So, so the bill is under 30 out. If the bill is under 30 and they don't pay it the next month, they will not get cut off. Oh, okay, that's good to know. And I can send you the email. Is that from, new? No. It's oh. about... It's not new. 
Um, probably about a year. Probably about a year. Okay. God, we've been working on this for a year. <laughs> but, um, I, I'll send you the email that came from Deltona Water to confirm that. That's good to know. But I remember we discussed that briefly here in one of the meetings. Um, and any and other like service related stuff that we felt now. I know the, the new manager or the director has taken a very proactive approach um, so far. They put water hangers, right, Terry? They, they've started putting, we got from uh, Linda White is one of the first ones to post it, that, hey, I got a door hanger today saying that my water bill, I'd use 20% more water. And they lowered that threshold, you know, to 20%, yes. so it's triggering those events now, so I think that he's there on that. They don't say it's, they just said it was, I don't know how, I remember how he worded it, but it it's says. Worded around, it's worded to the, I mean, because they're not able to identify whether or not it's 20% it, below or 20% above. Over, they, yeah. It's just a 20% change. Change. So yeah. they just say, you know, you, it could be a problem. Please contact us to discuss okay. it, something like that. Yeah. It's more of an FYI. There's an anomaly. Mm -hmm. I said that right. And if Any it, other service related things that we wanted to recommend? Oh. I mean, we, we don't have to close out the service related stuff today. We can set that up as a, a, an added item when we get the reviews, maybe. Because I don't expect us to meet again, unless anybody feels differently, until we get the proposals back in. No, I, I. The only thing that I would ask is meter services. Um, you know, what do our meters look like? I know Palm Coast has the um, automated readers. Oh, my God. We're talking uh, millions and uh, millions uh, and millions. I'm just saying, but they have those That's meters. That's why they have a $7,000 impact being kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fox, you may not be kidding. No, but I'm just saying that there's other meters out there. Um, according, they've got like three different meters there, but they're... They tend to slow down, so it is a better thing or whatever. You're not, they're not, you're getting more water than um, what they're probably measuring. But what about the equipment that's being used? You know, the handheld equipment. They'll do know. that in the. Yeah. Is it, well, is uh, what are we using now? You know, that's what we need to find out. Are we all handheld? Yeah. yeah. But are we all in the same? Um, Neptune. I think everybody has Neptune. I think that's part of the question when we do yeah. the thing, the details. Right, and then. Um, can you speak to, I'm sorry, Val. Mm -hmm. go ahead, sweetheart. No, in testing a meter, is that a cost, you were saying that's a cost to the customer? Um, I had a bench <laughs> test, I don't, I, I don't, I was probably so enraged at that point that I don't remember <laughs> yeah. black out. There is no consistent process. There is none. So, I mean, if the meter is, you know, if you say, I want to have my meter tested, who, I, is there a cost to that? I thought you had said they bring it into a, a, they bring it in for a bench test. I, I don't remember if they charged me or not I think that was like I guess the question is should they, there should be a formal policy around that is really what should it be there because should be a lot of not anybody can just call well I want to just test my meter that's an additional cost to city but if we have anomalies what's going on there's disparity yeah. in my bill then the policy should address whether that justifies a bench test could you briefly speak to um, while we're wrapping up could you briefly speak to um, the final choice for the company that will be yeah. doing the auditing the process yes so um, I have to comply with certain things also I originally somebody said to do a final three to shortlist three or two whatever it might be uh, but in order for me to be in compliance with our, my procedures pertains to the state what I would be required to do and it's what I told our leadership in the city is that we would rank all of them we wouldn't exclude anyone from a list could you explain that what do you um, mean by ranking? We, we would follow a process. By uh, I think they have a process already. I'm almost positive that, that that purchasing has that goes by numbers and categories. Now, we want to come up with our own. Let's go for it. As long as we apply it to everyone the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's just about being fair, in, you know, amongst all of our participants. But once we do our our, our rankings, we would if it's ten companies, it'd be number one through ten, and we'd be clear. One is our preference. Number two is our second preference, and three, and so forth. Can, can um, we talk about doing that based on what our needs are? Is see, here's, here's the th what I'm thinking. Because you said that you mentioned the next meeting. I think we need to meet to get into the weeds and the questions that we would be asking each of the companies that come in. To present. Before they come? Before they come. I'm be okay with that. Because, because if we're going to be fair to each company and do this right, we need to you know, have a brainstorming session about what are we going to ask Hey, I, I, I love that idea. As a matter of fact, to be completely create, transparent, we create it and share it with them. That way we, they can maybe be prepared. Mm -hmm. Then we can create some sort of way for us 
to have a, a scale system on what you know what we like, but you know, and that way we can be fair. Okay, to that. so what, what I hear you saying is create the questions list and create our own process. Maybe we can for for the for the scaling. And I'm not against it. Maybe we can take the existing one and build off that and create our own. Yeah, that's fine. I just I just need to come back and say okay what. Because we have a lot of in the weeds type of questions. Mm -hmm. yeah. The deeper dive. I, I would really like for us to make a commitment, okay, to go on to this. Uh, I know, I swear I'm trying not to beat a dead horse, but to go on to this audit right here. This is an audit that's already been done. Somebody's already paid $365,000 for this audit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And this take this and do and go on the website, download it on your iPad when you're trapped on a plane or you're in Tallahassee maybe and, you know, got free time on the road or whatever. And all of us, you know, instead of hitting that Netflix at night to hit this, just so that we can get an idea of the deeper dive stuff and then come up with a list of, of questions. And then residents also are encouraged to take a look at that um, to ask about these deep dive questions also. And, and I just, you know, I, I would encourage us to do that. Oh, I like it. Um, okay. Good. I, I did have one question though. Um, do we know um, what has taken place or what changes have been made? No. At all with the might, there, there may be pieces, but I'm hearing positive things. Right. right? And um, I'm wondering what steps they've taken that, you know, if we could you know, find out from them that may eliminate some of the repetitiveness. If they've already recognized and taken the, the next step to say, this is, you know, this is what we've implemented, this is what we're going to do. We're, we're doing training for this and this and this because we've noticed this, that we may not need to go to that part of it, you know, and, and just kind of mm -hmm. really narrow it down. If, if we could find out from Let me them. look into that. I also like the, I also... I have mixed feelings on that because I also like for us to just kind of be pure mm -hmm. in what we mm -hmm. felt have been the problems, right, uh, in the water company and say, here. And I, I'd be okay with them saying, done, we've already implemented this, mm -hmm. right? Um, just to kind of keep the process pure because what I've tried to do also is keep a, uh, what they call it, I think it's called, it's called the Chinese firewall, right? Uh, as much as possible mm -hmm. to maintain the uh, independence mm -hmm. of this body for transparency purposes. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm trying to ride that fine line because of, we want at the end of the day the same. This was a pure process. Everybody was open to it. Everybody had the opportunity to share their thoughts, right? In some cases, multiple times, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was a genuine, right? Mm -hmm. And then. Then we try to figure out what we're going to hold their feet to the fire on, right? Yes. Um, and, and be critical from that perspective. Mm -hmm. so, that, and um, that's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, okay, let me recap. Another meeting to talk about the deep dive, pre prepare the questions that we're going to want to ask at a minimum, because we could ask any more of the question that pops up yeah. in, in the mm -hmm. questioning. Um, and I would ask, I'll ask purchasing to come and share with us the existing scoring process to see how that yes. can be implemented within us or modified. And can we move this along? You what know? Do you mean? I'm, well, I'm going to get this, we're going to prepare this and hopefully by tomorrow afternoon can we, send it to uh, purchasing. Can you put out the request for the yeah. RFP? And, yeah, he can do that now. Yeah, so we don't need to meet. Uh -uh. No, we're not going to do that. Yeah, that I, I'm going to prepare this and give this to, right, to right. leadership saying, can you get your purchasing department That's to put, a, no, no, put no, our I request? No, no, I didn't want to hold that up. And then we, no. meet in, um, we meet when? This is the 21st? Yes, because I, I have, I have my, my busy time is coming up. Mm -hmm. um, is anybody in objection? Well, so next, what do we see? I got something on 28 here. What's that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's not that. How about next week? 28. You okay with that? Yeah. Same next time, Wednesday. same place? Yeah. Just to go over the questions Let me and stuff? Check the oh, yeah. Okay. We made great progress. I'm happy. Is this an um, uh, open meeting next week? Yes. yes, all of our meetings will be open. Yes. Wednesday, the 28th. Wednesday, the 28th. Does anybody from the audience have anything else they'd like to share or thoughts, comments? Just one thing, quick thing. Do you have a link? KPM. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Because he'll pounce on it and say, well, this is fair. And he's just used your words against you. <laughs> I get I, I had commanders do that when I was in the military. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do you mind sharing your name for the record? Yeah, absolutely. I want to help you here if I can. My name's Eddie Quinn. I work for a uh, smart water technology company. Okay. And uh, I had a chance to uh, listen to the last two meetings. I didn't realize they were going on, but I did go down and download it and listen to them. And uh, it, you're asking all the right questions. I, I do this for a living. So I'm not, this is not something I would do as an audit, but I, I take that information and help um, customers digest it and also bring solutions. And I, the principals of our company wrote this book, and I'm going to apologize right up front. They're engineers, and they're not speechwriters, <laughs> so it's pretty dry. Uh, and some of them I had highlighted some of the salient uh, chapters, but you're asking all the right questions. Uh, the reason I'm here is I'm, I admire what you're doing, and uh, uh, I was at the city council meeting Monday night, and uh, I understand your pain, and you're not alone with what's taking place here. Uh, that KPMG report in Charlotte County, the city manager at, uh, I'm sorry, city manager, the utility director is uh, at Winter Haven now. And they've got a lot of the same problems you all do. But you're asking all the right questions. And if I can be of any assistance in this, I don't do any of the audits at all. We provide solutions. And what you may want to think about is your, yeah, and I've got cards in there. What you may want to think about is the water department in the city has to defend every bill they send out. And the reason they have to is because they don't have real-time data. And those those meters that, uh, those, it's called AMI, mm -hmm. there's ways to get and afford that. But you've got all this money trapped in your utility and you don't realize, and they don't realize how to, how to get, how to find it. And I know Nina's very well, but if you start doing real-time information, instead of getting one read a month, you get 720 reads a month. And you can share that with the customer. And then you get customer portals where they can, now there's this paradigm shift that takes place. And they can, now they can say, hey, listen, let me set up an alert that says, hey, when my water bill goes over $35, whatever you want, the customer is in control, then they get an alert. It drives people nuts when all of a sudden the utility knows that there's a, a problem, and they're hanging they're hanging uh, door hangers. Why not just call them automatically? Hey, let let them know. And there's verbiage around it. So, but all that information is the data that's out there, and it's at your fingertips. So I, I reached out to John and, and uh, introduced myself the other night, and I hope to sit with him. Um, I met with Matt. Um, I started conversations with the city a year and a half ago when Matt Dillon was still here. And then when he left, there was just a, a lag and people had to, have to get comfortable in their jobs. But I don't do the audit part. I bring solutions when KPMG, and you might want to look at Savannah. They, uh, uh, they have KPMG to theirs. So KPMGs, they, they charge a lot of money for those. Yep. Counties can afford it and Savannah can afford it. Small cities and towns will struggle with that. Yep. But if I could help at all, I'd be happy to. You guys are doing Do you have some areas that are uh, tagged here? Yeah, I, I generally do that because it's a little dry reading, and okay. I take them, and I, I usually give that to a city manager or finance department and then the, the utility department, and I tag those to help them get to some of the points that may, okay. may be more salient. I will read this. Yep, yeah, absolutely. So there's a cross through. We can do these. What's can that? We, we can read these? Tim. Oh, they're yours. Tim. Could you put, just punch in your... Does that, yeah. does that help? Yes, thank yeah, you. Sorry, thank you, you guys so are, you're, you're asking all oh, Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming here. We've, had some, we've had some discussions around um, smart meters, AMI meters in yeah. the past. How much are they compared to the regular one? I'm ten, ten times, two times, three times the amount? It's not... It, there's, and you're right, there's a... You have to look, uh, like the cost of service for it, and it's got to be everything. you got to be able to compare apples to apples. And I got halfway through I gotcha. uh, putting that together for the city, and then Matt left. Gotcha. And it just kind of fell apart. Because there, there's savings also that come along with it, is yeah. what you're saying. I get it. Well, you know, when you it's got more self-sufficient. When you're rolling a truck, that's $175. <coughs> yeah. So it's all about the hard cost, soft cost, gotcha. providing the technology, and then ultimately you improve the customer service. 
can the customers get better service? That's the end goal when you work backwards. I like it. Terry, did you finish? Well, I, I, I know um, we had a conversation with Dave Denny about the possibility of, because he, he was very, he was a proponent of AMI, and we had a discussion with him. Dave and, Denny? Uh, Dave Denny? Yeah. Okay. And I know um, at one point he mentioned that we could have done, had the infrastructure in place for $2 million. And then, and that was, with the assumption that we were going to convert certain areas and then start rolling other areas mm -hmm. on. Um, but that's, but uh, it's so funny that you brought that up because I hadn't spoke to that. That is that is one thing that I think that as we're having this conversation. That could plug a lot of holes in what we've talked about. Yeah, I don't about. know. I mean, I don't know so much with the auditors, but maybe that's a continued conversation that we need to have with Delta on the Water um, is you know, how do we start making that conversion over to AMI? And um, that's the way technology is. Yeah. I mean, is now, AMI a company? Was that a no, it's, no, a, it's, a, it's a technology platform. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, if if the city, if say, for example, the city had the the um, transmitters in place, I mean, I for one would pay <laughs> to have my meter converted. You know, so we do need to, like you said, we, we you know we need this. Absolutely to have that conversation with the, the with the water department and we should have a strategic plan for how to start getting us there and I think with some options and that's the, that's the inform information technology i mean that the right. ami meter is like an i it's like an iphone 10 on right. steroids yeah. it's got so many capabilities and right. it's depending on right. how you want to program it you can do pay as you go you can do pick your own due date you can do the uh, alert for your bill, it's right. going to be an increase, decrease. You can go in there and manage your consumption. You'll have a record of that. There's there's Shoot. some meters that are available right now that you can actually attach to your current meter that will give you some of that same information for 200 bucks. Hey, Eddie, are there any local companies that do that, that you're aware of? Uh, Meaning, like, from Tampa to here, or uh, Jacksonville, do what? I'm sorry. That, that sell or procure those uh, smart meters? Well, it's part of our solution, but yeah, that's, you're, going to, you're going to come across two, uh, two acronyms. One is AMR and one is AMI. And the difference is you can drive around and collect those. And collect those like the power company does that currently. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, you, it's, it's big in the electric uh, area. you got to remember, electric's, electric's easy because it's portable. They can yeah. shift it around. Water's heavy and it's not. So, uh, but you'll see, hear those two, so don't get them confused. But the difference with AMR is you're still always setting your you're always in a reactive mode because mm -hmm. you you take that you take that read once a month you send that bill out if it's high they may they're going to get a call coming in right and then they want to take the meter up and bring it in because they don't believe it because they're not sharing data so it's all about the data and AMR doesn't get that data to you it'll store it in the in the system. But there's ways, and we do it all the time, and I, I get Thank references, but you guys are asking all the right questions. You really are. Thanks for coming. Anybody else would like to share? Thank you for coming. Uh, I have one question, uh, just while we're here. Eddie, when you talk about here, immediately see how you can leverage your water utility to help fund your multi-year capital improvement plans by unlocking additional funding. C give me the elevator on that. So if you switch out all your meters, you'll get somewhere, depending on the age of the meters, and I never got that meter file from the city, but you'll get a bump. Let's call it 4%. But you've got 4% probably tied up in your customer information system, your muni system. So again, the water industry is full of acronyms, mm -hmm. and you'll hear Munis is a big player in it. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, they sold the city, and it's a, it's a great way to do it, an ERP system. And that helps this, uh, the uh, police department, the fire department, parks and recs, and all that. But there's a utility billing piece, and they're going to struggle with getting 720 reads per month. And they, and they don't have great reporting. Mm -hmm. and, and you're right, those meters, those meters are really, think of them, you've got the meter here, and you've got a piece that sits on top, and that's the communication. Yep. That's what I was talking about. But, so you, you addressed something earlier called technology. There is about 
30 separate technologies that you have tied in from your meter to your mm -hmm. cash reconciliation. Yep. And no one's, they, people struggle with that because they want to buy software, they want to buy hardware. Stick it up in the cloud, take IT out of it, and then the key is you future-proof your utility. So for the, the next 10 to 15 years, you're, you've got tech, You've got technology available for you because you're on a platform mm -hmm. that supplies it. The analogy I use, and, and, and believe me, I didn't come here to sell, it's, it's a lot of utilities want to build their own car. They're going to get wheels, get a battery, a steering wheel. And what happens is they don't have, you know, in five years, they're, they're, it's on the side of the road because they, they can't, they're not car builders. Yeah. And what Fathom does is we deliver it as a service and think of us as the Uber outcome. Mm -hmm. And then we can help finance those meters. But then, again, I don't want to get into the a sales side. You guys are asking the right questions. And when I came back here, I admired what you guys were doing. And then this McCoy uh, meeting the other night, I looked at uh, Deltona Strong, and I wish McCoy had that. <laughs> <laughs> Bring some down. Well, thanks for coming again. Appreciate it. All right. Um, <clears throat> So we're going to meet next week, right? Yep. Next yeah. week, five, same three. time, same yeah. place. Yep. Thanks, everybody. And I think Thank we're adjourned. You. Thanks, everybody, Thank you, sir. Right. Good meeting. We're done. Mm -hmm. Are you going to tell Santiago next week? Yes, I am. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? Which button? Stop. Button. 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 Stop.